Mm. Did you get a thumbs? Look at this. I saw his thumbs up. He, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two of them. Not so tender podcast number twenty-two, Yay. episode twenty-two. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful day outside. Is it nice out? I haven't been it outside. Was, it was, yeah, better than the other day. What was way that? earlier today. Yesterday that was super rainy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know. I heard rain outside. I was like, I walked yeah. outside. I was like, oh. Rained all day. But yeah, no. Today was nice. We yes, have sir. a special guest today. I'll let Kelly introduce her because da, 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 da. this is Stephanie. Da, ba, ba. Hello. <laughs> I'll let you, if you want to share your credentials, you can share your what you do and where you come from, <laughs> where you hail from. <laughs> oh. Where do you hail from? My name is Stephanie. Uh, I am a therapist. I'm an LPCCS. I am from Akron, Ohio. <laughs> I um, love having therapists on the show. They're my favorite. I yeah. always have we one can... on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we can tag teams, Thomas. <laughs> Last time one of your cohorts were here, I had quite a uh, revolution in my life. <laughs> it was an emotional experience that day. <laughs> it really was. It changed my life dramatically. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was Marissa. It was. It was Marissa. Oh, wow. he, she threw him for a loop. It was good, though. I needed it. Hopefully. Well, so Stephanie does EMDR. EMDR. So yeah. she's a DJ. And yeah. And she does electronic yes. uh-huh. music. Yeah. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, would you care to give a brief or not so brief? <laughs> whatever well, you, you wish. A, you had a bunch of questions that I could not answer that day. I yes. was like, well, because it is, cause some people I am like, not trained. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, yeah. So um, EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitiz- Desensitization Reprocessing. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a form of therapy that is supposed to stimulate the right and left hemispheres of your brain. It's supposed to kind of make you do what we do during sleep, that REM movement, but during your wake time so that you reprocess your traumatic experiences while you're in a conscious state and are able to desensitize them the way dreams help desensitize uh, what has happened during your day um, when you're sleeping. So they do it in business hours. Except it does it during business hours okay. in a more conscious um, With great way. results. Yes. It is, I would say, it is touted as a faster form of therapy. Um, what I tell my clients is that uh, you can think faster than you can talk. Yeah. So, you know, us talking, it takes a while for that to come out. It's also harder to lie. When you're doing the... When you're thinking versus really? when you're talking. No. <laughs> wow. You know. I'd imagine... Yeah. For some. Yeah, for some. For some. So, you That's know. That's a special diagnosis. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes you lie to your therapist or you lie to those around you because it feels uncomfortable or because you feel embarrassed or ashamed. But when it's just the thought of what has happened to you or how you're feeling about yourself going through your head, you tend to be more That's honest. In here. Mm-hmm. So even if you're trying to lie to you. It's in here, yeah. for sure. So that reprocessing happens internally, um, and a ther- your therapist is just there to check in with you throughout the process and see to make sure that you are actually continuing to go on with that you're making process with the um, <clears throat> with the bilaterals. Um, but it's I, I think it's usually pretty s- powerful. It's usually pretty, um, it has a lot of like body uh, sensations that go along with it. Right. Um, I've had a few people that I know do it and they had to take a small break because mm-hmm. it became way too intense for them yeah. for a while. So that's the few people that I've had speak about it. They've both said, I had to take a break. Like yeah. it, it, it uncovered some things that you know they could only withstand for so long and then they had to take a little break and then when they went back they actually had a really you know a better experience with it um how would you know that that would be something you would 
need or uh, would benefit you? I guess is a question. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I think the EMDR was originally taken for people coming back from war. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of times it was for those people with PTSD. And if you think about the idea of like soldiers, the idea of talking about traumatic experiences and stuff like that wasn't something that you did um, not even amongst each other, but definitely not with therapists. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but what we've since found is that, you know, EMDR is helpful with anxiety. It's helpful with grief. It's helpful with depression. Um, it's helpful with addiction. Um, so it's helpful with more things than just trauma at this point. You guys are throwing it at everything right now. Yeah, I mean. In a I've, good way. You know, yeah, in a good way. Why not? So I tend to use it when I think that um, I have somebody who traditional talk therapy is not going to be the thing that progresses them along. It doesn't move very quickly. Mm-hmm. Or if it's very complex. So I am contra- I am trained as like a complex uh, trauma therapist. When I have people who have things that are heavily overlaying or they're in a constant um, crisis state, then I find that we need something to break that up. That would seem like it would cut through a little quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, it has a lot of mindfulness components to it as well. Um, so if somebody is able to be in a space where they can do um, things or will it would be really beneficial for them to do things where they are able to visualize and meditate or, um, learn meditation mm-hmm. uh, EMDR is usually a really good uh, Super tool helpful. to use well and there's there's people that you would not recommend it for oh for sure yeah yeah what what kind of people would those be we probably need more <laughs> of understanding that uh-huh. I think yeah yeah so I um when I'm starting EMDR with someone I do uh, a scale with them to kind of see how frequently they disassociate Mm -hmm. and how intense they disassociate so we all do a little disassociation that's pretty safe um some people tend to get sucked into disassociation at um, stronger rates Mm -hmm. i can be a little bit more cautious around that um because the idea isn't that i want them to actually feel as if they are reliving trauma and get stuck in that moment. Right. Um, I also would not use EMDR for um, someone who would struggle with the ability to self-regulate afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I am doing series of teaching self reg like I, I do a lot of what we call resourcing but it's really like grounding exercises, um, the meditation, the mindfulness, all of that. I do that for sometimes like weeks, months before I actually do any of the EMDR reprocessing. So giving them the tools they need before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we don't, if I don't find that someone is particularly great at that, I might not ever go into the EMDR portion of things. So it's like another level of like, you have to be very mindful before you could use that yeah. or go to, through that. Yeah. It's unsafe, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Like if they can't, if their disassociation threshold is too low. much, real low, or they go too far, mm-hmm. or, yeah. It would make it way worse. Yeah. yeah. My biggest fear would be that we crack something open and that I can't. Put it back in a jar. Yes. Get them out. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, I can't put you back in a jar. We yeah. can't. Yeah. You can't do anything once that's there. And so mm-hmm. um, I don't want you walking around with this open, Wide open. wound yep. when, you know, so far you've been at least yeah. bandaged it over. Yeah. Yeah. You've been functioning. She, she doesn't want to pick up spicy rocks. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no spicy rocks. No. I made a point to a friend that I, I said that, you know, if your person handed you all their stuff, you're not allowed to pick up those rocks and throw them back at them. I no. said it today. <laughs> Did you? Like if somebody <laughs> shares and is vulnerable with you, when you're upset with them, you can't be like, Hmm. Uh huh. Hmm. Right. You yeah. know? And he mm-hmm. was like, shit, yeah. you know, yeah. like, wow. Yeah. So, 
Well, that was your introduction, and we'll get back into that. I mm-hmm. normally ask Kelly, how was your week, Kelly? It's been a little... It's been a, <laughs> been a little nutty. I talked to Kelly this week. <laughs> I know how her week was. It's been a little nutty. I did um, some traveling for my, my son's travel team for volleyball so i was in chicago for a couple days love chicago it's nice one of my favorite i spent a whole summer there one time <clears throat> yeah i really it's do amazing. i really do enjoy it um favorite music store in the whole world there what's that chicago music exchange mm. best music store i've ever been to mm. so did some sightseeing my son had a blast i had a blast how do you do they did they did okay yeah there's a lot of new kids on their team this year and so it was, it was a good start. That was their first tournament, so nice. it was a it was a good start to their season. So he was pumped. Um, I got a, a bunch of new clients this week, so that was a little Jeez. rough. I think I had like, I mean, like three, four, which is a lot in in one week. Actual clients or intakes? <clears throat> intakes. Like I had oh, three or four intakes. Oh man. So that was a lot. It's, it's a lot to try to process. I usually will like click the toggle to like, I'm not taking new people if I have that many intakes at once. Cause I have to keep them separate in my head and I have to yeah. do treatment planning and stuff. So it's a lot. That's your, that's your week. Yeah. I had I a also, reasonable oh, week. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I, w- I was told this week that I'm not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it's always my favorite. Is this by a client? Uh-huh. <laughs> You're like, no, it's by my nine-year-old. No, I had a... Seriously? Um, yeah, which they took that back. They walked they, back. they were having a very emotional moment. It was one of my couples. Um, and they had just verbalized. It's happened a couple times. This was just the first time that was like, I don't think this is helping. And like, you're just maybe not the right one for us. Or I was like, that's... Totally it's fine. It's not me. It's totally you. Totally fine. Yeah. Totally fine. It's not us. It's you. <laughs> yeah. It it just can be very frustrating when you, specifically with couples, because you're also dependent on their willingness to move and to work. And so it's it's it can be more frustrating. If it's individual, you are struggling with getting the motivation. But with couples, sometimes you have somebody who's more motivated or some, more open, and so or just wants the hell out of there. Yeah, they were having a hard a hard time, so it was an emotional moment. And then at the at the end, the other partner was like, "Well, I'm not mad at you at all, and I think you're fantastic." <laughs> I was like, and "You're I like this." I, I was like, Told well, you. I don't think that they're mad at me, and she she was like, "I'm not. I'm sorry, I said Aww. that." I was like, "It's it is okay." It's okay. But I think that's helpful for people to know. Like, sometimes therapy can be super frustrating. Mm. I, I think everything. Yeah. The drive over here could be super frustrating. I know. Yeah. I know. But people, I think, sometimes hope that they're going to go and just kind of, like, vomit up all of their stuff. And we're just going to, like, sort through it and put it back together in a box. Yeah. And then they're going to You're gonna an organizer, right? Yeah, right. It, sometimes we take three steps backwards because something yeah. big has happened or we ran into a barrier or... A whole ass stone wall. Well, that's not helpful. <laughs> it's, uh-huh. true. <laughs> it's true. Why are you running them into barriers? <laughs> well, the holidays are coming up, so that is causing people yeah. a lot of stress. They're almost here. A lot of stress. They're here. They're this year. I have a turkey in my refrigerator. They are here. I know, but they're mm-hmm. going into the, you know, into the in-laws or seeing their sister or seeing that like. My sister's sweet. I know. I do love my sister. I had a young couple that had something pretty traumatic happen in their life and she was getting a tattoo for it. My life is weird sometimes at the shop. I'll have multiple clients come in with like the same kind of stuff going on in one day. And I did these violets down her back and I think that's what they named their child Mm. that they um, lost. And then they're a wonderful young couple and you could tell that they had this somberness to them that like they've been through some shit and they actually you could tell they were strong. Yeah. Like it was, it was a good strong, Yeah. you know, and we talked about a lot of stuff and we worked through some stuff with them because she was talking about like how he didn't kind of react the way she thought. And I was like, how, how should he react? She goes, I don't know. I go, I don't you know if, <laughs> if you don't know how he's supposed to like, and he's going like this. I, and he said for a young man, he goes, I know I need to be strong for her. 
Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. And it was neat. And then they left and I had a client come in from Arizona and she was getting a tattoo from her, for her grandmother, also of Violet, Hmm. who passed away. And I, after she left, I was like, that's weird. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so that's kind of my thing. I had three friends they're like 30 years old. They grew up together on the same street and they always had bonfires and they all got this little bonfire tattoo today. And they were hilarious. Uh-huh. And two of them were talking and one guy's a big dude. Like he's a big dude. And the other guy's kind of small. And they sing in a barbershop, not a quartet, but like a group. Yeah. And he goes, what do you think I sing? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like baritone? And he's like, no, I'm a tenor. And the big guy was a tenor and the little guy was a bass. And I was like, <laughs> are you guys messing with me? Yeah, yeah. But there are three guys. Two of them are married. One has a two-year-old. The other one has another baby on the way. And the other guy is single. But he was with a girl for like seven years. But they were so close. And the way they support each other and the way they talk to each other. And they were well-rounded. And they were funny. Mm-hmm. And they were. it was an awesome morning hanging mm-hmm. out with them. You know, they were super, I was happy that they had both, one has a two-year-old daughter and the other one has a daughter on the way. And I'm so happy that those girls are going to have them as dads because Mm. you could tell that they like care about stuff and like are realistic about stuff. And for young men, when people talk about these young people, I was like, well, those ones are pretty dope Mm -hmm. and they are awesome and it was really neat. Some young people suck. And some old people suck. Yeah, people like can suck. Like... Yeah. yeah, I've never met a, a mean old person. <laughs> <laughs> the one know, that like, lacks insight and yeah, awareness. <laughs> my distaste for old people. <laughs> if I'd be like this, bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Gone. Ugh. Aw, I love old people. No. I really do. You do? I really do. For like what? To like fill a hole? Like no. what? Like I don't know. <laughs> no. 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 I do. They're I like okay. Them. I like when they're bitter and feisty. You do? And then you can like crack them. And then you find out that like yeah. they're just lonely or they just, Shit you know, the last neighbor they had was a bitch or like, so, like, right. I like that. Oof. I you're like you're that. more patient. I'm super patient. I just, I'm over yeah. it. They're gross. You don't think they're cute? No. No. They, <laughs> you don't think they're cute either? They not be in their own pants. Also, also no. A, there are adults oh that can hit God. you with a car. They're like babies that can hit you with a oh car. They're not gosh. adults. They're, oh, they're gross. No, when I see them at like the grocery store, since, so since I work from home, I go to the grocery store at like 10 a.m. now. The best. It's fantastic. The best. But like, guess who's there? Old yeah. people. Old people. Yeah, Stay talking about how much bananas like, cost. Yeah, now. walking with their cart. And Do you they, see like, how much eggs are? Fold up their walker and put it in the cart so they can use their cart. Stop it. They're no. so cute. No. <laughs> Think of how much they have to share. Fuck them. <laughs> they don't share shit. They take. They could. They could they share. They could. If you ask they them. Can... If you crack them, oh. they share. Yeah, if you ask them. Mm-hmm. I actually saw my stepdad as I was driving here. I mm-hmm. went the other way and went kind of go by their house, and he was pulling out. I don't think he realized it was me, but I like swerved left to center just to like freak him out. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, he probably doesn't know oh, that's me. No, stop it. So my, I'll tell yeah. you a cute story. Yeah, let's see. So if my you can old save neighbor, my old neighbor, from my old house, the one I sold recently, he he lived two houses down, and he used to drive to the grocery store. It was like you know six blocks away. So he was they're lazy. He was getting. He was getting too old and he went, he was starting to like get lost, went uh-huh. just from there to there. So his son took the keys, right? Took the keys to the car. He came to my house and asked me if my husband had any old keys, <laughs> old car keys. <laughs> and I was like, no. I like, like him. He's resourceful. He was like, well, I saw that your husband works on his car a lot. So I wasn't sure if he had like car stuff. And I was like, why do you, why do you need an extra car key? And he was like, well, because my son took my fucking keys. And I need to go to the store and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm really sorry. So he leaves. Two days later, this little old man was on his lawnmower, drove the lawnmower yes. to the grocery George store Jones. and back. Stop it. George Jones. Who's his that? wife. Stop. Just... He's a country singer, okay? Oh, okay. Crazy country singer. They call okay. him the possum. Okay. He, there's a famous story. That his wife took his keys because he would drink and drive, and he yeah. drove a lawnmower and got a DUI, like went into the bar in his lawnmower, <laughs> lawnmower. came home. <laughs> yeah, George Jones. 
He was the cutest old man I think I've ever seen. Super feisty, just pissed. I'll take him. <laughs> so, story about someone who was not an old man, but <laughs> weird thing that I saw on the road the other day driving home from work um, in the evening. Pulling out, grown man, pulling out of a parking lot in a kid's Jeep. Like a like a hot wheel like a, like a, a hot, power wheel wheels, a power wheels jeep like, like a motorized one a motorized one like into the road next to me into the road stopped at a red light i like took a picture of him i love it can you send us that picture we'll yes, put it please. on the show i sent a picture please. i like took a picture i was like trying to be like really sneaky, sneaky. about it no he and wants you to take a I, picture i sent it to my husband i was like i was trying to be sneaky because i didn't want him to know i was taking a picture and he's like but if you drove 20 miles an hour, he couldn't catch up with you. <laughs> you could coach him <laughs> <that ahead. laughs> run over him. <laughs> like, or up a hill. Like, what would he have done? Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, lights on, everything, because it's dark. I was going to say, this was not that long ago, so it was dark outside. It was dark outside. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I just love that he treated it like, he was a in vehicle. an actual yeah, like car. pulled out into the lane, sitting at the stoplight. <laughs> sitting like, at the stoplight. Could have like, taken it up the sidewalk. I had that exact thought. I was like, we're on Market Street. There are sidewalks. You can actually <laughs> yeah. just no. be on a sidewalk. So here, I always joke with my buddy who lives like two blocks down. If you ever watch the old Mad Max, I'm like, this is like barter town. This is like, I will see, there's a guy who parked his tractor out front. <laughs> uh-huh. He went to the head shop next door. And like I see people driving the craziest stuff, I'm always like, "Welcome to Barter Town." I'm, I'm waiting for <laughs> Mad Max, Max can, right. to come out and like anything that moves. It's crazy. <laughs> Love it. It's well, cool. your week was reasonable. Yeah. My, My week mine was, was a doozy. Your reasonable. sounds good. Yeah, I went out for pizza last night. It was okay. Uh, where'd you go? The place down in Canton, and the place was beautiful, and the service was great. But I'll tell you what, but I was a pizza person. Yeah, it was okay. It like a, yeah. It was okay. It was one of those, um, like, big oven places. That, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. And it was okay. But yeah. every everything else that, like, was going out around me, I was like, shit. Should have got yeah. that. Yeah. Gotcha. I had fantastic pizza in Chicago. Yeah, but you did. It was so good. Do you want to get to rub Chicago that in? Style? Uh-huh. Yeah, don't uh-huh. rub that in. I brought some home for Andrew. He reheated it in, like, the air fryer. Th- he was like, this was not that good. And I was like, what would make you think... That you like rebaked it, like what? How? Because like, it wasn't that great. It's like well, usually double baked pizza. <laughs> <laughs> like you didn't warm it up. <laughs> like this you is put weird. it. In, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's like, really crispy and dry. Uh huh. Right. I was like, yeah, well, it, it was really good yesterday in Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> you <laughs> ruined it. and I don't have any empathy <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous about tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow is the Cleveland Browns Steelers game. Oh. And my friends are crazy. Mm. I told his wife, I said, you should probably cook turkey tomorrow and make them kind of sleepy. Because I have a hunch they're going to be... Wilding out? uh, I I don't even know how Mm. it's going to turn out. That's right. I do have a client that's going to that. Yeah. I have a client that's going to that and a client that's going to the Ohio State-Michigan game. Because that's this weekend, too. Is it? Mm -hmm. Was that today? I don't know. That was today. That's Jay, was today. that today? Jay's in her head somewhere. Oh, yeah. No, it was today. You're right. I think. So it's not yet? Justin's oh, no. Talking it's us. it's, it's not next today. weekend because my client was talking about Thanksgiving and then a concert and then mm. the game. So next weekend. Yeah. Go football. But, yeah. Whew, All right. We got a subject week. for today. Ooh, da, 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 da. Da. Oh, we're going to talk about fighting. Oh, I got to tell you where this came from. Oh, yeah. Please do. Like fist fighting? Sometimes. <laughs> Relational fighting. Combat oh. styles. As combat styles. <laughs> Thomas Finish them. It's actually conflict styles. No, but... I like combat way better. Combat My dad styles. was in Vietnam. Um, <clears throat> I had a client who was dating a, a sweet boy, she said, and she's super excited. And they were dating for, I don't know, a couple months. And he he's really good at communicating because he came from a good family and she did not. And she's like, this is so foreign to me. <laughs> he doesn't fight right. Does he? No. <laughs> and said that, uh, he said, this is going really well, but I, there's a few things we need to talk about. She's like, okay, because I need to know your combat style. Like, how do you fight? And, and it was interesting because I've never 
weirdly thought about that. Mm. That should mm. be oh, yeah. like, what do you call it? Your kink list. And yeah. then that yeah. love language, maybe that one first <laughs> <laughs> argument languages, anger languages. Yeah. Yeah. And then, all right. So and it's not kink. called combat style. <laughs> no, it's What's not. it called? <laughs> this says conflict style. So there's five different kinds. Mm-hmm. And there's a guy that developed it. His name is Thomas. Is it Kitterman or something? Kilman. <coughs> Look at me. <laughs> well, you I mean, remember Thomas. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> hey. You have like three Thanks, different Mom. letters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good. We might be related. <laughs> My dad got around. Yes. So. <laughs> like, you know, like you're like. Mm-hmm, I'm familiar. Mr. Kincaid definitely got around. <laughs> he was so, friendly. Yeah. So there's... Strong, silent type, I feel like my dad was. Mm. Yeah. Mine was similar. He softened up a whole lot in his old age. Yeah. <laughs> we turn into women. We do. Well, estrogen just comes in our body. Our testosterone goes way down. We soften. Well, that's fine. We turn into men because our estrogen also Lord goes knows. way down. <laughs> Or so no. I don't know that <laughs> women get women get softer and older. No. no, we get fucking no. brutal. You start off pretty soft. Our our combat styles start switching up. Oof, that's... and so do your guys's. Yeah, we just give up. <laughs> just, we just like, like this. I'm gonna eat this shit. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of like the opposite. Women are like, I've been taking this shit for way too long. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like you it know what? Switches up. That's why old people, old couples are happy <laughs> because. The woman's finally getting her way, and the men are just along for the ride. They're just eating shit. They're just, they're just eating it. They don't even care anymore. They have They've given made it up. to stage five oh. of the relationship where they've just... Acceptance. They've, they're on the same team. They didn't and climb off the pedestal. They jumped off it. We knocked them down. Like, King of the Mountain uh, style. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a... Uh, all right. First one. Mm, attacking. What? Get out of here. It says, this argument style, which can also be described as conflict prone. <laughs> That's my metal band. That's my other metal band. <laughs> we have so many. I know. We need to start a, <laughs> a, a festival. A Google Doc. Right? <laughs> it says, relies on pointing out things that others are doing wrong. Usually motivated by anger or annoyance. So, I'm familiar with this one. Mm-hmm. This is my unhealthy conflict style. <laughs> That's yours. It is. I'm. I'm very quick to anger. I'm Kelly's quick like, to anger. That's my jam. No, it's. This is my natural. Like I am oh, very shit. quick to anger. So it would be very natural for me to be attacking and to be mm-hmm. conflictual. I have to actively try to not be because it's not my intent. It's just. It is my personality. It really is. I'm an eight. Remember we talked about the Enneagram? I never, I couldn't get through that book. I bought two of them. I have one in my bag. Can you walk me through it? Because I literally yes. was like this. I can't Mind blowing. But yes, I'm an eight. So I am, we are, we are conflict. Comfortable. She's, she's an eight. Conflict. I don't know what I am yet. I forgot my number. Really? Mm-hmm. I want to say Do you were remember? like a four or a five. That's, you were somewhere in the middle. It sounds right. Yeah, you got to anyway, walk me through that. I shit. know. We'll, we'll do a whole thing on it. I have the book in my bag. Okay. I take it everywhere. I don't read. I don't read. I I own. I have one on my nightstand too. Swear on everything. I own like four different copies. I I buy them for my clients to distribute them if I need to. This thick. You think I could get through it? Then maybe you bought the wrong one because the one I have is like this thick. We'll have to do it. Hey Jay, look through my bag. There's a book in the back of it, right there. I'm not joking. I want to know if I got the right because no wonder this book shit. It's yellow. I, is no this idea. green? Yeah. Mm. My, I'm a seven. <laughs> you, I'm a I don't, soft I don't three. Think, I don't think you're a seven. <laughs> you're I don't prob- even know what that means. Oh my God. Like, I, I literally I have can't. no idea. I could guess, but you're not supposed to guess. Yeah. Let me see is it. Is it yellow? Yeah. Bring it in here, Jay. Just, just put your arm in so only people see your arm. <laughs> like, I know, right? <laughs> I've had so many people go, can you just post pictures of them so I can see what they look like? I'm like, no. No, it has to be. It's the study guide. The study guide. <laughs> I didn't read the front of the book. I just read the big letters. Yeah. This is well, not. Well, I think I sent you a picture of it. You probably. sent me this fucking link. Nuh-uh. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, all right, all right. I'll bring you one next time. Thanks. Because I own, I own four of them. Yeah, I own two Maybe of those. Maybe five of them. Maybe. Yeah, well, did you understand you why I have a hard time then. with that? Can we trade? 
Will you give me Fuck one of yeah. those? Because then I can study. Fuck. Anyway, so an eight, we are the argumentative ones. We don't enjoy or look for conflict, but are very comfortable having it. It does not, but it's productive. That's what our intent is. I'd rather just call it, call it what it is. Okay. You're an eight. But I can get super attacking. Jay, will you turn unhealth- that talk back off, please? In my unhealthy state. <laughs> okay, so attack style. Yeah. Is that a good way to do it? No, it's not ideal. Maybe in a street fight. <laughs> what would you say you about think, people Stephanie? who have an attack style? Um, I would say for the person who is being, I would say you probably don't resolve conflicts. The other person probably feels attacked. <laughs> yeah. They- <laughs> <laughs> and therefore unheard and it's just defensive can- and probably wants to attack back and you don't probably make points well and uh, you probably come to counseling. <laughs> <laughs> we get a couple of these, huh? So what else does it say, Kelly? It says it can come off as aggressive or accusatory. <laughs> no mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. It says this argument style can certainly help you express annoyance and anger at your partner, but doesn't necessarily tell them what you need. So for that reason... It is not the best way. Is it always? It's, it isn't always the best way to resolve conflict. Is, is, is there a thing that says it, it's ever appropriate? Um, it says <coughs> and because so it's accusatory and the accusations about your partner's action, it leaves them open to arguing back, which is where things can get heated. Mm-hmm. No, it does not say it's a this good is appropriate when. Oh, you're, is that all of it? That's it. All right, yeah, so when it's inappropriate. When someone's <laughs> trying to attack you. <laughs> Mine's in my purse. <laughs> Let's go. Well, you usually want to, like, they know you're serious. Yeah, right. Like yeah. that. So if someone is attacking. Now, so this is the thing, Bray, we even did this show about this today. If you're starting to talk to someone or see them or be intimate with them, I can guarantee that 99.9% of people have never had this conversation about your combat style. I'm going to keep calling it combat style. That's fine. I appreciate it. Well, this is not, it can be personality based, but this has a lot to do with modeling, like a ton, lots of people that I see. If you only date models? No, they, they grew up in a house of people who were attacking. Yeah. Most people don't know what modeling is. Can you explain what modeling is? Sorry. Well, like th- what you what you have seen, okay. what has been modeled for you. I just you. want to make yeah, sure people yeah. understand. No, it. For so sure. yeah, when they're for sure. Google box and things. Yeah, where they what has been modeled for them. So I have a lot of people who come to me, and this is this is foreign. I statements like I feel this when this happens are foreign. I do a complex I statement, and their minds are like blown. So when they're attackers. They're yeah, like, they I don't. will fuck you up. That's the kind of I statement they use. Yeah, well, and they... I fucking hate they, you. That's why the fair fighting rules are so yeah. mind-blowing to some people. Because oh, they say, you can't call I've names. I've shared that so many You times. can't yell. You can. It's just not going to get you very far. It'll take longer to get to resolution if right. you don't follow these things. But a lot of people that have attacking styles either saw parents that attacked each other verbally or physically. I mean, whatever. So yeah. they, they pick that up, they screamed back at their parents, or they were screamed at and didn't have a voice, and now that they're adults and have one, they don't know what else to do other than That's this. That's their language. Yeah. Okay. So, Next. Well, number two is defensive. Oh, weird. Mm-hmm. It says, this comes out in all scenarios, but particularly if somebody is on the receiving end of the attacking argument. <laughs> mm-hmm. In those instances, it's natural to want to defend yourself and attempt to offer explanations or deny accusations. It says, while defending yourself against an angry... Uh-oh. <laughs> this is not going to be a good word. <laughs> what? Uh, onslaught? <laughs> what? what this says. is really combat now. That's a combat word <laughs> for sure. While defending yourself against an angry onslaught is a normal thing you to want to do. That's a good word. Oh. Blackman says, I don't even know who that is because we didn't read that part. Um, it's not going to get you very far again. So somebody comes at you and attack, 
attacking way or an accusatory way. Yeah. And then all you do is focus on that's Let's, not true. How could you say that? You're I wrong. Stopped that. Yeah. That's a huge thing. And I've been sharing it with people. I said, I will not defend myself. I will not explain why I should have to, why I should be allowed to do something until you truly m help me understand in a kind way why it's so important to you, where it's coming from, and then I can put, you know, a, yeah. a presentation together <laughs> to, ex I mean, but that's mm -hmm. how I feel about it. <clears throat> right. Like, I, I've spent so many minutes of my life. Defending? Oh, my God. When this doesn't have to be, like, this, this is an argument style, right? A conflict right. style. You don't have to be attacked in order to get defensive. There are oh, a lot of people, like, that I come at that. you super, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you know, this really bothered me, blah, 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 and they I tried pop. to work on that, too. Yeah. I really tried to work on, like, why is this question even bothering you, Thomas? Right. Like, in my head, right. talking to myself. Like, you should, she should be able to ask you any question without freaking you out. Right. Or express what she needs <clears throat> without. Yeah, but they're sometimes not. No, but you some, know, I time. guess I'm just like, yes. sometimes they are, but you should ask some questions yeah. if you're right. Like I now I will start asking questions like yeah. and ask like, well, why is this? Where is it coming from? Yeah. Why is it important to you? Because if you could make me understand it, I can kind of get on board with it. Most things. Sure. I, I get this a lot um, when I'm working with an individual it, when I'm working individually with somebody who is in a relationship, they come back with trying to use their I statements to try to like resolve conflict different. And they get a lot of this. The other person isn't changing their style. They're not in therapy mm -hmm. or they're not working on the same thing. So they get super frustrated because maybe they're going from withdrawing. That's the next one or attacking and trying to be more assertive. And then as soon as they say anything, their partner, like I said, pops and gets super defensive and isn't, there's no room. It says it, it's very closed. It's yes or no level leaves very room for looking for a resolution. Even in explaining to people like, you know, stop defending yourself like that. Just make sure they understand where it's coming from. I also think that we, we were, you know, a statement that started going around is, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's not a real, that's a quick little, Yep. but it's not healthy. No. Right? I mean, like, honestly, like, you can say that shit and act like a hard ass. You know, not my circus, not my monkeys. Okay, but I don't know if you noticed it, but they're still your kid. Well, right. They're still your husband. Right. They're still your boyfriend. You're whatever the fuck you're dealing with. Team. So you can right. say yeah. that shit how you want, but like. You're in the circus. <laughs> yeah. Even if, I don't know about you, but if there's a monkey in the room, you kind of got to deal with that fucking monkey. <laughs> Is that fair? Like, I've never been in a room with a monkey and be like, I didn't even know there was a monkey here. <laughs> Where'd that monkey come no, from? No, not once. No. No, oh, they're kind of fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. they'll eat your face off. That's true. You literally. know? So I think those blurbs and like little things like, like it's, that's a you problem. And I've said it and I look mm -hmm. at myself now going, the fuck is wrong with you? Right. It's okay, a me so problem. You, You're you sitting do here. You do you, I'll do me. Don't well, worry I about said, it. Yeah. Well, I said, is it a us problem, a me problem, or it's like somebody else is like, where is like, sure. I, I Where's don't know the where fault? this is coming yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know anybody who gets defensive, Stephanie? You're like, oh, yeah. Personally you? or clinically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm attacking. I don't get defensive. You probably get defensive, <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I've seen this fighting style in in my family life. Mm. Um, not in my household, but in the household that I come from. Yeah. And... And so, like, I had, as I was, like, listening to this, I was just, like, listening to how it just creates this kind of, like, circle of an argument that never ends, yeah. right? And these hours, it feels like hours, I don't know. Yeah. But really, like, these hours of endlessness of conversation, not even conversation, just... Bitterness. And, and I think just it also just brings, forth, it's right. just jabs back and forth right. where like the subject of what the argument even started out being just changes because it's like, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone mm -hmm. because 
you know, you have to keep defending yourself against the next thing. And then now we're going to attack about this. And it's like, well, you did this. And, you yeah. know, it's. Well, it they just, look for they look for proof. So the yeah. attacker will say something and then the person will defend. And then the attacker will bring up something else to yeah. try to, like, prove that this yeah. is, in fact, true. And so then, yeah, yeah. it just and it ping just, pongs the whole way down. And, you know, an hour and a half later, it's like, what was this about? And why is this right. still going on? And no So you grew one... up in the Gaza Strip. So <laughs> Basically. Up, yes. So. We're still like, I don't even know why we're fighting. <laughs> I kind of know. I don't know that there's ever a winner. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, Everybody loses. Everyone loses. Oh. And that's how I feel about these fights. Yeah. Specifically, those two together. Like, yeah. there's never a, a, winner. a winner. It's just at some point, we take You're a break. Tired. They just yeah, and you just get tired. Right. People are obsessed with winning an yeah. argument. And I look at people like, don't you just want to know you're right or win? I was like, no, I know I'm right. If I know I'm right, I'm not even going to argue it. Like, why would right. I even argue it? Because I'm just like, and if you feel a certain way, like, we're at a standstill. Right. Like, what? I, I'm sure there's food that you like that I don't like. I'm not going to convince you to like them. I, it doesn't affect me at right. all. Like, And it's one of your biggest pet peeves. <sighs> Lord. Yeah. Well, I had a friend, my best friend the other day called and she, she pick up the phone and she's like, I won. <laughs> I just laugh. I'm like, oh, Lord, what does that even mean? What did, did you, you win? What the fuck's that even <laughs> That's what I said. What did, tell me more. <laughs> you, you won what? <laughs> what did you win? Imaginary trophy. She has a blimp hanger full of imaginary <laughs> trophies. She does. But she laughed and she was like, well... She was like, I was right. I called it. I was right. I was like, but do you feel like you won because you were right? Because now you're pissed that you were, you were right. 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 He did, in fact, do the thing that you assumed he would do to hurt your feelings. And it doesn't that doesn't sound mm-hmm. like winning to me. Mm-hmm. Being, being that is correct. the biggest <laughs> fucking twist ever to but make yourself feel better. Yeah. How's that even? Because well, then she didn't feel dumb. She, she saw yeah. it coming. She wasn't blindsided. She called it. But she was it right. it still happened. Well, yeah. No, but now she's justified in her anger. That's what that is. what that is. I mean, like, it's... Shit. She was right. I get it. She knew. She won. I was like, you can be correct. I don't think you won. We <laughs> I feel would like, like to we get... need more words in our vocabulary. It's yes. what it is. Right. Oof. That's... <laughs> I know. I don't. Honestly, I'm. I'm gonna say no. We don't. I'm gonna say most people need to understand the definitions of the words they currently have, because a lot of people use words. They. I ask them, I go, "What does that mean?" They're like, mm. "I'm like, why are you saying things you don't know?" Oh yeah, we we Webster a lot of words here on this yeah. show. Hey, any listener out there that owns a trophy company, we would like to get sponsored because we would like to hand out oh my imaginary God, I would trophies. Lo- I would love to do. That. <laughs> Just pull it out. <laughs> Here you go. You won. It's Good. like the gold star on what is it? Like America's Got Talent when we yeah. have clients. Here you go. Here's your imaginary yes. trophy. Like you win. Wow. Uh-huh. Start sending people cookies. Make it, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. You know, you can do all of those ridiculous things. Uh, order yes. all types of stuff. Yes. Things Glitter you bombs send to and people. poop and potatoes. And a a <laughs> bouquet potatoes? of sex toys. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice. I mean, for some... Some would probably be very inappropriate. Listen, my daughter, Listen. my daughter today told me on my way here, she said, make a kid's podcast. And I was like, why? And she goes, because all you guys talk about is boobs and wieners and vaginas. And vaginas? vaginas. <laughs> like a fajita? Vaginas. I was like, that's a true. And she's like, well, you said that it's. An adult podcast. Is that what all they think we do? I know. I was like, no, we no, call it baby, paying bills, right? fucking mowing the grass. Right. I was like, that's not true. That's not true. Do those things come up? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. However, it's not, not, a not our. It's not what I mean when I say I'm on an adult show. Like, a, like... oh no, oh no. We do an adult show. Oh, it's no. for big kids. It's my... She meant like OnlyFans. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know what she thinks. My I'm going to have follow, I follow up questions when we go home. <laughs> yeah. Her second grade classroom has oh lots God. of thoughts about her. So. Yeah. Right. My mom has a podcast for an adults. Adult. <laughs> Holy shit. Lord, help me. Oh, Chancellor all right. Kelly. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Withdrawing. Get out of here. I hate this one. This one makes me mad. We talked about this before. 
Oh, yeah. As soon as I told her what we wanted to talk about today, she looked at me with such disdain. I don't want to talk about It was this. beautiful. <laughs> Let's talk about Is this Is this one. the idea of... Oh, you get yeah. to read it. It says, withdrawing can affect an argument in two ways, depending on whether you are being withdrawn from or the one that's withdrawing. It's it's the passive. It's the passive one. The stonewalling one. The Thomas Walling one. Whoa. That's what it is. People that, that people that don't want don't want conflict they just ignore you walk away and nope. there's a like it's it, there's positives to this one taking a break or a pause can be beneficial during conflict but completely withdrawing and not returning to the topic or not like that's a fight or flight thing right yeah yeah these are the flight people or yeah. the freeze people probably more probably more the freeze I, people what's that I don't know. I want to say it's more flight. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fight, flight, or freeze is a- aggressive. Sexual running. things. Since we're an adult, con- we're an or adult like, podcast. Dissociating, <laughs> disassociating. Like yeah, that they just like check like out. Dissociating. Yeah. Just like I can't. Well, like I'll give an example. I worked at a. Um, Do I freeze more then? I would guess that you're more of a freezer. To be to be honest. Really. Yeah. But not I worked anymore, in a residential. ladies and gentlemen. Not anymore. You bring me some shit now, we're going to talk until I'm blue in the face. At the residential center that I worked at, I was the counselor for a boys' cottage, right? Well, fights popped off all the time. All the time. So we would have the kids that were chucking chairs and brawling in the middle. We would have kids that would run to their room like as, as soon as anything popped up. And then you would have like that one kid that's eating breakfast at the table and doesn't even move. Doesn't look. We've seen those YouTube videos move. where the guys get, like, the guy comes in with the gun at the bar. Yeah. And he's like, and the guy's just sitting there, like, smoking, eating his wings. Like, yeah. don't give a shit. And he's like, and yeah. you can tell even the gun guy's like. Right. What the yeah. F- those I feel kids like that's the always I made might... me the most sad, if I'm being honest. Because they're so used to the conflict or the chaos or the, that they just. They just shut down. Their brain literally turns off. Like, goes into survival mode, and they just, they just. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. Uh huh. So you're a freezer. But withdrawing. So when I scrolled through, when I scrolled through this, because in my unhealthy state, I can be more accusatory and attacking. Withdrawing (sighs) is the worst thing that you can do. To you. To an attacker. I would much prefer you be defensive. Because <laughs> then at least we can, like, have a conversation It's not productive. And this is very much pre-Counselor Kelly, like, in my 20s, right? Mm-hmm. That I was mad and I wanted to talk about it. Right and now. I, I want to talk about it now. And my, ex- my ex-husband was a very much a defensive fighter. And it was infuriating for me. But the only thing that he could do worse than that is walk, is walk away. <laughs> My current husband is more of a withdrawer. Our conflict pattern is much healthier now than it so. was when I was 20. You mm-hmm. know, But like it can still be frustrating <clears throat> because I will lean into conflict because I find it productive. And he he he's avoidant. I mean, you, you know him. He's avoidant. He said so. He's not here. He's definitely avoidant. <laughs> no, he ain't here. He's, He's in avoiding Florida. this conversation right now. He's in yeah. Florida. But so yeah, withdrawing. That's why I was like, so talk about this. If you are a withdrawer, you are a freezer. <laughs> oh, well, I again, I think that the withdrawing, I see that very much as somebody who is actively moving away Mm -hmm. like that active like walking out the room getting in the car driving out driving down the road i've done um, that that, i've definitely done that and i think that withdrawing can be healthy if it is that pre-discussed thing of i am somebody who needs a minute Mm -hmm. and like kind of how we're talking about hey what's your combat style in the pregame. Yeah. So we're saying, when I get angry, I need to take a few minutes. I definitely could have been. I am going to that. do that. Yeah. But then we're going to come back and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, like what you're saying, you're like, oh, really? I want to talk about this? And you just got in the car and left? And so, <laughs> right. and if you're an attacker, I'm not saying you ever did this. 
But what some attackers <laughs> might <a> do <laughs> <laughs> is then get in their car and follow you. Yeah. I never because... had to do that because my ex-husband, when I was not who I am now, who was the defensive person, I didn't have to chase him down. We just went back and forth. Yes. But, but Andrew has done that in his previous marriage. Mm-hmm. He would get in his car and he was followed often. Mm-hmm. Oof, me too. Yeah. Uh-huh. I wish I could have done better with that for sure. Yeah. But I, I, I think that when you are somebody who's like, hey, this is, I do need I get very overwhelmed with being attacked. Maybe yeah. I get very overwhelmed with being confronted where I just need time to sort things mm-hmm. out. So give me my 10, give me my 15. Right. Then you don't get that other half of it's the hard. people following yeah. you. I said I'm like a plane. Uh-huh. There's many ways to approach me. And if your approach to landing a plane is rough, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can land a plane. Mine is not brutal you can't approach me brut- if you talk to me calmly I, I you could tell me almost anything calmly and i would probably Be not okay. do any of those yeah. things but if you approach me prickly or hard yep. i'm immediately like this yeah and i will get away well and yeah. again people can do this even when approached appropriately appropriately mm-hmm. if this is somebody's conflict style it doesn't always necessarily get triggered in an unhealthy way it can just get triggered so i could come in and again say like hey this really bothered me and you just completely shut down or like i need to take a shower like not even acknowledge what it is that i'm trying to say just like the defensive people they they feel the need to defend themselves all the time and these sometimes people with a withdrawing conflict style they don't they again even if somebody's using the I statements, they may not have the skills to have an appropriate productive conversation and they just, they run because yeah. they don't know how. Uh, if you like to run, we didn't get out the number. Like and subscribe, by the way. And the phone number is, you're going to say it because you have better eyes than me oh, right now. Oh, okay. 234-200-5949. Send us a text about the craziest... Uh, Fight? Yeah. For real. <laughs> craziest combat? Yep. Spicy combat. I, I want for real the craziest and I want police records mm. <laughs> blackouts how good would that be can we That'd do like a good. screen share man that would be good well so the last one is open we're wrapping up it says we did we get through five already I don't is, know. Not, is it I think that there's only four. Oh, we're gonna make up the fifth one mm. is there only five yeah there's only four we need a fifth I think one. So. I would say the fifth one is petty. Well, let's go. Petty to that fighter. One. <laughs> what's, what's that? Like you just play Tom Petty records? <laughs> like the, That's the best sarcastic, one. manipulative. <laughs> oh. Passive aggressive. I would say is definitely a fit. Would you agree? Oh, but see, is that a mix of the attacking? Oh, mm. oh shit. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. I can smell the smoke burning. You guys are thinking it's, hard. Because they're not. The reason I think it's a fifth one is because they are not as direct as yeah, an attacking person. Right. A direct a, attacking person it's more passive is aggressive. assertive that turns snowballs right. into aggressive. And the defensive person is, again, probably assertive that snowballs into aggressive. Withdrawing is the passive side of things. Right. But I would say like the petty person or the passive aggressive mm-hmm. fighter, the one that is aggressive or attacking and then plays victim and gets defensive and then attacks again. And like, mm-hmm. it's not really blended. It's like both, mm-hmm. all three, really, because then sometimes they withdraw if they're not winning or if mm-hmm. they want to prove a point, they'll leave. They're random. They're random. They're like, what do you call it when you potluck? Potpourri. You never know what you're going to get. Are those the hardest Potpourri. people to diagnose and the hardest people to get through to? They're usually, I would argue, being a trauma of specialist. Of course you would argue. I, w- I would argue. We've been over this, Kelly. The attacking that part they, of it. Right. It's the conflict. You don't part. say. They're the ones that had the, I would say, the most chaos. Like that they, they had a hard time getting their needs met and therefore they are willing and trained i guess to go down every avenue to try to get oh that's right. to whatever they'll try anything point yeah they're the most resourceful very resourceful well that's a positive way to look at it mm-hmm. i like that mm-hmm. 
So number five, open. Yep. It says, then of course, there's the holy grail of <laughs> argument styles. Da, 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 da. This is the trophy style. It is. Mm-hmm. It Let's says being it. open and able to consider the whole situation from different perspectives while remaining calm. <laughs> I'm into that. This I encourages your partner that. to think about the conflict and the way that you're both reacting. I don't have a partner. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like... It says this serves to move the argument past the conflict phase and looking into the resolution phase. I feel like that almost frustrates people as well. What? Kissing you like, oh, hey, we can get through this. And you're like, no, we can't. Now, some people like, you need, just fight. To, need to fight. They, want, they don't know how to get to resolution without having conflict. It is it is like actually foreign to them. They feel like there has to be some sort of angst and like tension. And... How is this not bothering you? Yeah. Well. So the hmm. other thing that I think is interesting about this is the word argument. Mm-hmm. I guess I would want that defined a little different. Oh, let's oh. let's do it. <laughs> oh, let's look. So I will say this. My one friend, his wife always like, and Dave was freaking out. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, I wasn't freaking out. He's like towards, we call him George Costanza. Because it just immediately is like, <laughs> I wasn't freaking out. You know, it, but <laughs> he really wasn't freaking out. But yeah. anything elevated because he's normally so calm. Yeah. Like if I raise my voice, people are going to lose their shit. They're going to be like, he doesn't do that. Like if you ever heard me like get loud with somebody, you'd be like. No. I know. This I is know. not going to end well. <laughs> I have heard you be frustrated and you get like more intense, but yeah. just as like monotone and cool. It's almost scarier to me. Yeah. I'd rather you yell at me. <laughs> I'd rather fight. <laughs> So it says argument, an exchange of opposite views, typically a heated or angry one. So it is, by definition, implying anger or frustration. Yeah. Argument. So what one person would consider an argument, sometimes the other person definitely would not. They'd be like, I didn't even know that was a big deal to you. Why are we fighting? I didn't know we were fighting. Yeah. Because, okay... When I am angry, my angry voice is, it's, it's low and very long words. Do, do you get Zero more calorie. calm? Huh? You get more calm? More I soothing? <laughs> I get more soothing. <laughs> my angry voice would be like, turkey gravy mm. beans. Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. that's me being. That's how you know that I'm very angry. Uh-huh. Like slowing it down. In, like do you understand? Increasingly what? mindful yes. of what is coming out of her mouth. <laughs> and, and so when you, I'm familiar, that's that's how I. That's usually how I fight now. Is that I will like literally close my mouth and like sigh really heavy because I'm trying. This is Kelly's to work move. Through. This is Kelly's move. I do do that. (laughs) Or I like rub my face. (laughs) My my neck gets splotchy. Is that it? It does. I break out in like hives. If you see her put her hands on a counter and lower her head, or raise it, or like this, fucked. Like I'm your pre prayer asking, asking Jesus himself to calm down. Take the wheel. Apply my filter that I have lost. That's the move, right? It's, it is. It is. Yeah. It's hard for me. But you get slow. I do. And I get, deep. It's usually like slow and, yeah. It's and how you get deep. That's what angry looks like? That's what mm. That's what an argument. Oh, okay. That's what. That's how you behave. That's my argument, argue yeah. style. Mm. And so, I guess what I'm wondering is, <laughs> it's not usually very attacking. No. It's very to the point. 
If you don't know me, you might miss it. <laughs> oh. I've... So your husband could say, we never fight. And in your head, you're like, no, we have had multiple arguments. You just didn't know we were having one. <laughs> he knows that we're having arguments. Other people might not. Don't notice. understand. My threshold is much higher. Like I remember being in my therapist's office talking about my relationship with my husband now. And I'd be like, we don't fight. And she was like, you guys need to fight. And I was like, but we we don't. And she was like, you can't move forward in this relationship unless you know what your fighting styles are. Like you have Combat to, styles. you have to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So now, <laughs> I'll say, like to somebody, I'm like, oh no, Andrew and I never fight. He'll say, well, Kelly and I got in a fight this weekend, and I'll look at him like, you don't know what fighting looks like with me. <laughs> like you have no like, idea. And you're still walking. We right, did not like, fight. Because in my head, I kind of equate fighting to, like, unhealthy conflict. If we can navigate a disagreement in a healthy way, that is not an argument or a fight to me. Right. If we're fighting, it's because I've yelled or Uh cussed or, which, like, I don't don't do Uh anymore. Well, we've already determined you're not much help. Yeah, (laughs) I know. (laughs) Not very helpful. I had, I was in a band one time, and... Let's just say the was it singer, called conflict prone. It was might as well. It was <laughs> pretty names. bad. Let's just say the singer was just problematic, and we we're out somewhere out of town playing. And he goes, "TK, you 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 just real you got a real dry sense of humor." And the drummer goes, "Nah, he just doesn't fucking like you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I was like, eh, right there. Yeah. I've had friends not say that, but like I'll be in a group of people and I'll be really quiet and somebody will say how shy I am. <laughs> what? <laughs> they will. They'll be like, Kelly's so quiet. She's shy. Yeah. And like my friends, they would, they would like laugh out loud. She's already like, thought yeah, of she's 13 just not, ways right. to murder you. <laughs> she's just not feeling your vibe. That's why she's not talking. <laughs> like this is just not her scene. <laughs> they can't read the room. No. <laughs> yeah. No. And if, you're right. I have read it. If and I'm, I'm like, quiet in the room. None of you are my people, so yeah. I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> if I'm quiet, oof. Uh-huh. They're fucked. I also, I, there's uh, a place in time, right? Yeah, I can be quiet, yeah. believe it or not. I don't I need have to, to be. Talk. I'm only mouthy on my stages, which is this where yeah. I tattoo and when I play music. I am not mouthy anywhere unless I'm having a conversation with my dear friends or something like sure. that. But I am not mouthy anywhere that I'm not extremely comfortable. Anywhere. Oh yeah, I would agree. Uh, same. Same. Nowhere I don't. Else. Nope. You could take me anywhere and I'd be just fine, but yeah. you wouldn't know Super I was polite. there. But polite, respectful, well behaved, yeah. reserved. Reserved, but you are not always. No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I haven't called that before. She's, like, she's just so quiet. I had a client go, Thomas. You just always come across just so like like zen. I was like, yeah, that's I'm hiding the green monster. Like I am Bruce Banner from the Hulk. Like I do everything. This is not me being a great human. This is me making you not deal with. Uh, the uh, other things, oh. yeah, the other stuff, and it doesn't make us fake. I feel like right. that's absolutely like it is not a well, facade a or a mask, right? It it's is a control. discipline. Well, it's like I don't want to be obese, so I have to be disciplined to not be obese. Right? Like there's things that you know, and it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't want to have con- conflict with people. I, I'm, I don't it's time enjoy and place. It. Right? Yeah, I don't right. enjoy it. It's time and place. I think, I think that you don't have to be the same person in every setting and that doesn't make you a fake person but like you know the person i am at work is not the person i am you know at home and the person i am when i show up to my kid's school is not the person i am or like yeah yeah. i don't speak to my dad like i speak to my mom i don't speak to my daughter like i speak to my buddy yeah exactly read the room right right and you're allowed to do that I mean, if you're and you should, if, if there's some core differences, <laughs> please stop. You know what I mean? Right. It's right. actually super beneficial. <laughs> you <laughs> should read the room. This um, so earlier today, my cousin calls me and she's like, "Um, I had a weird experience at GameStop today. I so my cousin is 
a year younger than me. And she's there with her 10-year-old daughter at GameStop to buy a game. And she goes, where can I find this game? And the guy at the counter, who's like a 20-something-year-old, because I was like, how old was this guy? Goes, up your butt. And she's what? Like, he didn't even do this, up your butt and to the left. He didn't do that. And she's like, excuse me? And he's like, um, we have Aww. it back here. And so he was just joking around. But he was like, joking around. And I was like... I was like, I think that he should have noticed that this woman came in with a older child. Right. And probably was not the person to make this joke with. I don't know too many people other than your friends. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not so deplorable. That, you know what I mean? And so for the rest of the encounter, he called her madam. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> he swung so hard the other day. Oh my god. That's like trying to kiss a girl and then she pushes you away and then you try to put something in her butt. That is like a big jump. Really? But I was like, he did not read the room well. No. Either time. Either time. Did he give you a discount? Oh my god, you know how Duh. pissed I'd be if somebody called me mad. <laughs> Madam, I don't like calling ma- madam. People call me ma'am now, and it makes me mad. Like, when did I become a ma'am? When did that- and I just loved that. Does she was- run a brothel? It's <laughs> like, oh, okay, madam. <laughs> I was like, how old was he? She was like, it looked like he was in college. And I was like, he didn't read the room. He didn't see oh this God, mom walk right. in with this clear, like, 10, 11 year old kid. Right. Madam. But you gave him that mom, excuse me? And he was like, well, uh huh. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> Don't you say that shit on Harry Potter? Like, stop. <laughs> well, you will love she was buying a Harry Potter game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he, she, he jumped to that. He's like, I was just doing a butt spell. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Justin, the yes. next time you're at work and somebody asks you where something's at, be like, up your butt. Up your butt. <laughs> up your butt. I mean, I used to say that to my brother when I was little. Up we your butt and around up, the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up your butt to the left. <laughs> Where's the remote? Up your butt and around the corner. Madam. Well, we were laughing because she's like, I say that to my kids all the time. But he, she's like, you're at work. You don't. I'm, a customer. I'm a customer. I'm a customer. I mean, it's GameStop. Let's pump I, the brakes. I know. You're not Merrill Lynch. I okay. Don't even know. Like, fucking relax. <laughs> this is true. This I is mean, true. fuck, dude. <laughs> Game, do you remember what happened when they were trading stocks with GameStop? Like, come on. They have a false sense of entitlement at this point. There's no fucks given. They tried to come up in the world and be adults, and you guys squashed them. Uh-huh. No. I butt went talk. To GameStop. GameStop butt talk. <laughs> but <laughs> recently, I didn't even know that they were still like a thing. Yeah, they're like just went down. How? How they're still a thing? But you I was, know why? Every time I go in there, which is often anymore, because now my younger son is playing games, I am the only one in that store <laughs> ever. The they don't only stay long. one. I mean, yeah. No one. Every else time is I go in there, I'm the, only one. the <laughs> only one. Maybe it's. Well, well, with my child. Yeah, it's yeah. Just well, yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> you ever see fugglers? Mm. What? They sell them there. Mm-mm. There's these stuffed animals, and they look kind of like little monsters. You mm. know what I mean? Like a little yeah, sure. fuzzy oh. monster, but they have real teeth. Look it up. Dude. So I started buying them for my you kid. Real teeth. You can't say real teeth. <laughs> okay. What? They have human teeth. <laughs> Go ahead. Be funny if the like, conspiracy that it literally was... It's that where the tooth fairy's been taking our teeth this That's whole where time. they've oh, all been. That's God. where they go. You can sell them there. This is so good, by the way. For real. Do you see their teeth? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, I they sold them there so I could go there and buy them. You, want, you bought one? I have several. <laughs> okay, the little bunny ones are kind of cute. How many? Mind your business, woman. What? Well, because you, you never have one Madam, or something that you enjoy. Madam, that is inappropriate. <laughs> if you enjoy something, I actually don't. Extreme. I, I no, I didn't go crazy with that, but I wanted to. More than three? No, probably between me and my daughter. Okay. But they're so funny, and it's so cute. You're like, oh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Because yeah. you're like, oh. <laughs> Because it's so like 
you show her a bigger picture where you could really see. Like, it's so bizarre. They sell them at Walmart. But I love them. They do. Now it's ruined. Now it's ruined. I'm just kidding. They sell well, go, stuff there. Yeah. You should support GameStop and keep going there I will. for the fugglers. I will. <laughs> so good. This, do you love them? This guy still needs a job, okay? I, I, Madam, do you love them? I might have to buy them. You wouldn't buy one? I would buy them. Look at it. It's so good. Get the fuck out of here. That's hysterical. It's so good. Show the camera. Can they see it, Jay? It's so good. So send me some. Oh, it says funny... Funny, ugly monster. Oh, yeah. ma'am, <laughs> madam. <laughs> so for, for four and up, ages four and up, people. Uh, this is not toddler time. Also, ladies and gentlemen, don't buy this fucking book. <laughs> buy the real book. It looks very similar. It's the exact same cover. It Except doesn't it doesn't say, say study, study guide. guide. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thomas. That wasn't you... my bad. I'll bring that. I'll bring it back. I'll bring you mine, and we'll just trade. That way, I can study. All right. So let's let's get closer to the wrapping up of this. Mm-hmm. I want to say this: if you don't know your combat style, you probably do. I would look at it. Yeah. And imagine what the other person would feel like right. doing that, and what would be a better way to do it. Because here's again, like when we talked about uh, attachment styles, you can't just say this is just the way I am. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. You have to look at the best one of the five, which was open, mm-hmm. and try to the holy grail. like shape the way you react more closer to that than what you're. You think that's just how I am because that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, that's if you're okay. allowed to change everything else anymore, I think you should be able to change that pretty good. I mean, <laughs> literally, we have people. Stop. I, is that fair? That's fair. Well, I'm saying we. Th- this is. You can be who you want to be. Yes, I'm. And this, you can fix that's this. That's a problem. You can adjust this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You don't get to just throw up your hands and say, "My parents fought all the time, so I'm just aggressive." Like yes. So I I'm just going to carry on this trauma and generational trauma for the next. Yeah. I had that conversation years. too, and I said, "Is we were talking about well, that my dad did this or my dad." I was like, "Listen." I grew up with some crazy stuff in my family, and I didn't do any of those things to my kids. Right. And I'm not super educated. I'm not, I didn't find Jesus. I didn't, there's no, well, I'm saying there's no like crazy yeah. thing. Like, right. I just, just pivotal like, moment where, no, yeah. I didn't Light bulb sit on top on. of, you know, a mountain in Tibet for six days, you know, meditating. No, I, I literally was like, no, nah, that's not cool. Yeah. You know, and I was just a little bit more disciplined about it, I mm-hmm. guess. You know, so if you have a fighting style, what would you, what would be some quick tips from you smart ladies, not my Appalachian ass, but that would be a good, like, starting point? Because you can't give them too much. Yeah. You got to give them just like a little nugget, yeah. you know, of like, start here. So I, I guess I'll share what I do with clients often. I, I do start with an I statement. But I don't even have them communicate it. It's like an internal <clears throat> internal dialogue, and I send them like an emotions chart, which everybody's like, that's so silly and so basic. I'm like, no, it's not. First of all, the emotions chart I use is phenomenal. And second of all, I'm like, you can't, you can't communicate anything if you don't have the awareness as to what you're feeling and where it's coming from. So I will send them an email with a basic I statement and emotions chart and have them like write feelings down that they experienced between my that session and my next one. And I'm like, okay, so now we can figure out what it is we're trying to convey right. and communicate. But like that, I would say that's step one. If you don't, everybody's like, I'm, I'm just mad. Well, you're not mad. You're mad because you feel something else and it's pissing you off. So like. Well, my friend yesterday said uh, embarrassed, betrayed, or mm-hmm. what's the other one? There's three. She, sorry. I wish I could. There's. But why she's mad because she's embarrassed. Mm. There's like two more, and she, which one is it? You right. Know, what? Yeah. yeah. What's hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Scared. Yeah. Scared Scare. makes people insecure. Yeah. Makes that's people, it. Yeah. Scared. Uh, embarrassed or fuck. Neglected. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. Right. I feel like anger is just what's easy to show. 
Oh, yeah. What's the one that's most socially mm-hmm. acceptable? Anger? Yes. Yeah. yeah. People get weird when people are lovey. What's wrong with them? Right. Why are they so nice? Or sad. Why are they when so just, nice? Yeah. Who fucking Cry- says that? Crying yeah. makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. Happiness <sighs> makes people uh, skeptical. Crying makes me not happy. Yeah. So, yeah. I, it, A lot it of... freaks me I out, bro. A lot of people... Even my own. Like, whenever my eyes sweat, I... I don't like it. When my eyes sweat is not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> no. Anyway, so that's what I would say. I would say that was that would be step one. Look up a nice statement. Look up an emotions chart and do some self reflection, so that you can try to figure out what it even is that you're trying to communicate. Because if you're not prepared for like what you said earlier, I think it was before the show started, but like what the end mm-hmm. goal is. Ooh. I got a better idea. What? Sharpen if you're going your in, if, Well, if you're really going into combat, you need to know, A, why you're fighting. Mm-hmm. You'll fight way more passionately if you know why. That's true. Mm-hmm. And you know your enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in true combat, you need those two things to do it well. I don't know if I like the word enemy, but yes. <laughs> well, they, if you're opponent. <laughs> no, that's even well, more. I'm saying like know who you're going yeah, up against. Yeah. Opponent's better. I'm yeah, sorry. opponent and why? Like you know, to me, when I think about fighting styles, so if I was going to give someone advice, that's kind of your job, right? Mm-mm, actually, not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 We no, don't give advice. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you you cut the road however you want. <laughs> Um, but like yeah, that. if I was going to talk to somebody about it, I would say, I usually tell people the first part is I'm a big, I'm a big person about processing. So write it down, mm-hmm. like take a step back, sit with it, write it down. Because I will tell you, there are things that my husband does or that people around me do. And I immediately get that flare of anger Mm -hmm. like I'm hot I'm mad and then I'm like I'm going to talk to them about this Mm -hmm. and the first thing I think of is like what do I want them to know you know and so I'm like devising this whole scenario in my mind and I'm like actually this isn't that important yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know like when I get to it I'm like actually this I don't know that there has to be a conversation about this, right? Like, you know, and so. Why am I so upset? I'm just tired. Yeah. And and so. hungry. Like, yeah. Sometimes it's once you've really like looked at it, it's like this, this actually isn't worth bringing up. And most Mm -mm. people never get that. Yeah. Even close to that resolve in their own head. They're Mm -hmm. me like, no, I feel this. Because here's the thing. Again, people say these random little blurbs. I'm like, well, if you have a problem with somebody, you need to tell them. No, mm-hmm. you need to understand why you have a problem. That's right. Right. Because right. again, if you don't know, you can't fight that fight properly mm-hmm. unless right. you actually go, this is why. This is right. why this bothers me. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but whenever I had an adult, when I was young, explain something to me like, you can't do this because, see, this this is going to hit this. This is going to go over there. You're going to kill the dog. You're going to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, yes. shit. Yeah. Right? Much yeah. easier to adjust. So when you just right. bark at somebody, you're doing the same thing as when your parent goes, because I'm your fucking dad, and that's what I fucking said. Yeah, because right. I said that. And so. no one likes that. No. no. So that's basically the same thing, correct? Am I... Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'm a why person. I am not somebody who you can just give a random equation to, and then I'm going to remember it forever. Mm-hmm. Why is that an equation? Why is it important? I need to understand why. Why is that important? Yeah. Why do I have to put the square peg in the square hole. Why? Right. Right. And you can't just tell me because you do. And so that it's the same thing. I have to understand like, well, why is it important for me to have this conversation with this person? And sometimes it comes to you because it is, because yeah. when this happens, this delays me in my day. When this happens, mm-hmm. um, it makes me feel this way. And I, you know, Sometimes it is important, but yeah. then I can talk. I can then have that conversation and formulate a way Set of having the plan. having the conversation right. with the opponent about. How well, I mean, but then I, I want to <clears> put. Yeah, it in, I, I try to put things in a way that yeah, people yeah. will truly be able right. to put it. Like when I basically saying, 
when your parent says, because I said so, right. that's what you're doing yes. to someone. And if people finally, because I don't, we don't tell people that a lot, mm-hmm. but if they can put it in that context, when you're just barking at somebody, that's what you're doing. Yeah. That's right. not fair. No. Right. Well, and I think a lot of people, when we're telling them like, hey, this isn't healthy, this isn't the way that you should do it, they then clam up and then they just won't pick a fight. They mm-hmm. don't fight. But that is just as detrimental mm-hmm. Because if this is really something that has to be discussed, not discussing it will create bitterness and resentment. And like that's not going to get you anywhere either. It's going to drive a wedge. Just maybe you'll be the one to leave because you're bitter instead of them leaving because you hurt their feelings. Like So there has, there has to be some sort of middle ground there. Well, yeah. Just like a brutal parent, if mm-hmm. every time you try to talk to them, they're just like, because I fucking said, you stop talking to them. Right. Like you always stop talking to them. Right. You know, because it's not a reasonable place to share anything or ask anything or, you know, there's moments where you, you know, you're, I always say, you know, if I'm yelling at my kid ever, it's because they're going to get hurt and I'll explain it to them later. I'm like, Hey, I didn't mean to bark at you, but this was going to hit you or this is, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I'm yeah, not yeah. going to just lose my shit on them. Right. You know, I'm not perfect. No one is, but so being mindful of why you're upset Mm -hmm. and i loved the idea of knowing your um knowing understanding the person that you're having the conversation with because the most important reason for having the discussion having the argument having the conflict is because you want a resolution because you actually started caring about them Mm -hmm. i do not argue with people if you don't but i and i don't even have a conversation with people i don't care about yeah so think about that too. Mm-hmm. You're only having that conversation because you don't want to not have them in your life. Right. You want to be around them and you want it to be reasonable. So, I mean, I think we lose track in that right. as well. So, yeah. So basically, learn your enemy, destroy them. <laughs> be tactical. <laughs> like Conan says. Think about it. To see your Conan. enemies right. driven before you. <laughs> yeah. So it all goes back to Conan. My whole life Happy. goes back to Conan. Full Everything circle, about guys. it. Yeah, I could base my whole life on Conan. I can. I know. I can. He does a beautiful job. He stops at nothing. Doesn't. That's that's real determination there. So, uh, <laughs> like, follow, <laughs> like, follow, subscribe. watch Conan the Barbarian and right, learn yeah. how to be a good human. Mm-hmm. Other than when he got drunk and punched a camel, that was kind of bad. <laughs> He did that in the movie. <laughs> bad call. Yeah, and he called it's a it, bad luck. He called a girl a bad name too. Oh, bad luck. It was like the seventies. It was the times. It was the times. Was. Everybody got drunk and called people out of their name and punched <laughs> and hit a camel. <laughs> he did. It was very common back in the. 70s. He was really drunk though. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. She just just scared her to death. Two three four two zero zero five nine four nine call text text me don't call oh, text don't call. and text. put your favorite part of a conan movie please yes it's my favorite movie right. we share a birthday in your in your radical conflict situations radical conflict. <laughs> i would love to hear it holy shit you wouldn't love to hear it yeah i want to hear it i want to see it. photos the aggressor the i want to see if you have any irish kisses the petty. Do you know what Irish kisses are? No. Black eyes. But I was I was oh. just when I said no, I was like, ah, no, it's a, it's definitely a bruise on your face. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so Tell much to be for better. coming Thanks on the show. Thanks for having me. We really me. appreciate it. Now, listen, and fun. if people want, if people want to do your, EMDR, EMDR, do some research on it. It could be very like in a lot of different aspects, and find a really good representative of somebody who does it well. Mm-hmm. right yeah 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 and it helps it does help um and you can find some really good ted talks on it and uh imdria e-m-d-r-i-a is a good uh resource um if you look online um and they can also help you find some reputable emdr people in your area so Thanks. i definitely am going to look into it because i feel like i, I need to you know pick up spicy rocks yeah let's get with crazy guidance. i don't know if i i don't know if i need it i'll be honest with you madam i don't know if you're ready 
Be kind, guys. Tell him to tell him to be kind. Yeah, be really nice, and if not, fuck off and like in a nice way. But no, seriously, fight better. Mm -hmm. Don't just because you're really gonna just teach your kids to be assholes. So stop doing it. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.